مرحبا دم باش ام به خیراتن ودکن بر دوامی ریز سمینار ما در فاکولته طب دا هم دخوازین بر دوام بکنه و سمیناران ایروژی سمینارک تیداین عنوان سمینار یورینار این کانتیننس دکتر دلاواسما دخوازه و سمینار پیشکش بکا دکتر دلاواسما یورو گنکولوژیه و تخصص پسپوریوی که آنها در مشف اورانین بورگ در مشف نیزی برلین در جرمنی دا کار دکا دکتر دلاوا اگر تنگ مده بهیزی تو دکاری دست به سمینار خوب بکی کرم بکنی دکتر روش باش کشت کارم از سمینار خواه به انگلیزی بیجم تمام so I'm going to talk about urinary incontinence. It's going to be not too deep diving into the topic as I want to do a second part uh, about prolapses, about the genital prolapses, because usually the urinary incontinence and the genital prolapses of the pelvic floor goes hand in hand. So what is urogynecology? It's basically... Um, a dive into gynecology where you actually um, also include the bladder, um, the bladder and every part of the system there within the gynecology for women. So as an overview, we're going to go through the types of urinary incontinence, the causes, the diagnosis and the therapy, and of course, the prevalence as well. So... What is urinary incontinence? It's of course, refers to the involuntary leakage of urine and be caused by many factors, um, such as a weak bladder, muscle, nerve damages, or obstruction of the urinary tract. The prevalence is usually that approximately 25 to 45% of the women experience urinary incontinence at some point of their life. So it tends to increase with age and is more common for those over the age of 60. And why is that? That's usually most common because of the estrogen. So in the menopause where the estrogen is basically the concentration is decreasing. And also during childbirth where you damage a lot of the pelvic muscles, um, basically it weakens the pelvic floor muscles, which then leads to a urinary incontinence. It's a very sensitive topic for many, and many don't even seek help for a long time. But um, for many patients, it causes really a psychologically, a psychological stress and a social isolation. I've had many patients that don't want to leave home for a longer period, unless they have checked that they have toilet anywhere near the place they are because they can't hold the urine. Or for example, participation in physical activities. So what types of urinary incontinence do we have? So the biggest types are of course, the stress incontinence, the urge urinary incontinence and the mixed urinary incontinence. Then of course, we have the overflow urinary incontinence and the supraspinal and the extra urethral incontinence, but I will be mostly focusing on the three major ones. So the stress, urge, and the mixed urinary incontinence. So as I said, what can cause these urinary incontinence is of course the pelvic muscles, which with age, weakens, yeah, or with childbirth. Hormonal changes, as I said, for example, estrogen, um, chronic urinary tract infections, which basically then uh, um, stresses the bladder, so it gets more sensitive in that way. And then, of course, pre-existing illnesses, operations, trauma, and medications, for example, diabetes or multiple sclerosis. So what's the most important thing in actually figuring out 
what type of incontinence it is and how you can help them is basically you can take help of there are many incontinence questionnaires and the description of the symptoms so basically the onset and the duration by cuffing by physical activities um how much they're drinking um for example if they're lifting something heavy if they lose something or one of the most important questions as well is um basically if when they want to go to the con uh, to the toilet uh, which basically distinguish between the stress and the urgent continence is when they have the sudden urge to go to the toilet. So the question, what I want to point out is that the anamnesis is really the most important part of diagno uh, diagnostics when it comes to the type of urinary incontinence and the way you can treat it. So of course the medical history, if they have diabetes or if they had any type of trauma to the back, how many childbirths, and basically if it was a vaginal um, or if it was a c-section it's more common that you have weakened pelvic muscles after a vaginal and the urinary incontinence the prevalence increases with that um, exactly all these type of questions are important so what is stress incontinence so it occurs occurs during physical activity, let's say sneezing, um, coughing, laughing, or when you're walking up the stairs or having something that is basically heavy. And in what way is basically that your abdominal pressure is higher than the muscle, the sphincter that's holding basically in the urinary tract and the urethra that's holding the urine in is so the abdominal pressure is higher than that and that's why when coughing sneezing and laughing there is a leakage of urine what is an urge incontinence that's basically an overactive bladder yeah and, and as i said before one of the most important questions to discipline them is do you have this sudden urge to go to the toilet and can you hold yourself before you reach to the toilet or do you have a loss of urine before that so basically urge incontinence it comes all of a sudden and causes them frequent urination in nocturia nocturia is basically then when you wake up during the night and you have to go to the toilet quite fast and and what is this caused? This is caused by bladder muscle contractions. Yeah, the detrusor muscles. They're too strong or they occur at the most yeah, inappropriate times. Most common, as I said before, are UTIs. MS and small bladder capacity. Yeah, normal bladder capacity is usually from 350 to 500. It depends. But if you have a small bladder capacity, of course, then you can't pull that much urine and your bladder will then basically overreact to it. And a mixed incontinence is basically a mix of both of them. What is an overflow incontinence? That occurs when the blood bladder doesn't properly empty. And example of that is when you basically have a a genital prolapse that means that uterus or the front wall of the bladder to the vagina is basically hanging down which means that the urethra's angle is not in a good position and it's blocking the way for the urine or for the bladder to totally empty itself that means that you have um still urine in your bladder after voiding in the toilet. So that is a kind of a pathway blockage, nerve damage or weak bladder muscles. 
Yeah, for example, multiple sclerosis, for example. Okay, so here we see um, how the actual micturation works. So the parasympathetic nerves go through the pelvic nerve. And these ones basically contracts the detrusor muscles and relaxes the sphincter muscle so that you can void. And the sympathetic is basically inhibiting the detrusor contractions during filling mode and contracts muscles in the urethra and the bladder neck so you can basically hold your urine. And then you, of course, have the voluntary muscle, the pelvic muscle, and the external sphincter. So even if your bladder is full, you can still kind of hold yourself and that you do voluntarily with your external sphincter. But when that is not strong enough, like it happens after childbirth or weakened pelvic muscles uh, with age, as I mentioned before, that's quite difficult. And of course, one of the other common things or common um condition, I would say, uh, obesity. So where you have a constant high abdominal pressure and the external sphincter after a while can't hold it. Okay, so the diagnosis is consisting then of the anamnesis, as I said, the physical examination, which is one of the also very, very important where you check the gen status, basically births given, um, if they had any type of infections, you have to do a transvaginal um, examination where you see if they have any prolapses or not, which can um, basically lead to this. Pad test is basically when you ask your patients you know, they have a pad and you ask your patient to cuff and you see if the pad is basically wet or not. The Marshall Boney test is a um, transvaginal test where you basically, with two fingers, push the bladder up and then you ask the patient to cuff and um, see if there is any urinary leakage. Or you do it on the on the gynecology chair. Basically, you ask them to cuff or push. Urinary status is very important to see if they have any um, urinary tract infections. Other type is, of course, the ultrasound, where you check if the bladder neck is stable, if the if there is any type of obstruction in the in the bladder, for example, like a stone, tumor, these type of things. Of course, you can't always see a tumor, but at least the something. Uh, you also check the stability of the bladder itself, not only the neck. Urodynamics is basically, it's a machine where you then can measure the bladder capacity, you measure the detrusor activity, you measure the detrusor activity together with the abdominal pressure. You can also measure the sphincter, basically the contraction of the sphincter, if that is working. And basically in general, the electrical activity of um, the pelvic muscles around it. And the Euroflow meter um, is basically, I don't know if you, I'm talking now to the students mostly, if they have seen these toilets, there is a special toilet you sit on and then you basically void and then you can see the pressure basically of the, of the urine coming down how much urine is coming out, etc. Exactly. Okay. How do you prevent 
getting a urinary incontinence. It's basically the Kegel exercises. So straightening them, especially after childbirth. That's really, really important. Um, weight reduction. As I said, obesity is one of the also one of the most common causes, for example, for a stress incontinence because it increases the uh, intra-abdominal pressure. Smoking, COPD, and asthma, which leads them to chronic cough. And basically, staying hydrated to avoid bladder irritants. Basically, avoiding UTIs, urinary tract infection. I really liked this picture because it shows fun conversations as we age where we have three elderly um, and basically describing the conversation that can go on in later life <laughs> where most of the people actually they're basically suffering under a yearning urinary incontinence but are not talking about it at all and we tend to think that it's only basically belongs to the elderly, but that's that's not true. It is more common and it's getting also more common in the younger population. So what's the treatment for it? You have one part, which is the conservative treatment which is, like I said, the Kegel exercises, for example, physiotherapy, yeah. You also have these electrical devices where you have an intravaginal probe and um, extra-abdominal patches, which basically helps and contracts the pelvic muscles. Medications, behavioral therapy, um, what is that is basically most important for um, the urgent continence the urgent continence is not only that the bladder is getting overactive from nowhere, it's usually a psychosomatic reaction where the, the patients basically when they feel that they have a toilet nearby or they get stressed, their bladder reacts to it at the same time. So this behavioral therapy is trying to focus on the patients with for example, breathing techniques or um, trying to make them think of something else so they can hold themselves a bit longer. Tessa and vaginal rejuvenation, basically with laser therapy. Tessa is basically uh, when, when the bladder is hanging from the frontal vaginal wall down or if you have a prolapse that leads to the urinary incontinence, yeah, that you basically push it back. And estrogen, estrogen is really important. Um, when you have patients that you see are very dry or that they're in their menopause age and these type of things, please give them estrogen. Of course, if there is not any contraindications, first you have to check for that. Interventional is, of course, the operations and small procedures like Botox or T4T. Botox is basically, I really like it, especially if you have an urge incontinence. Then you go through um, cystoscopy, which you basically check the bladder and you can just put, yeah, of course, it depends on the bladder capacity. Um, but where you basically inject approximately 50 to 100 units of Botox in, and it holds for approximately two years. And um, the patients are very, very happy with that. And it takes just 15 minutes to do it. And you can even do it without actual general anesthesia. And the TFLT is basic, basically a tension-free vaginal tape. Colpo suspension is another option where you, I will, I will show a picture of this, but um, the TFLT and colpo suspension are basically two options where you stabilize the, the urethra, the angle of the urethra. So it's basically 
not falling down or moving when you're coughing or you stabilize the sphincter. Then you have the AMS 800, which is a sphincter prothesis. Um, it was actually usually uh, firstly made for men, but we do this also for women, which is basically an implantat where you implate the device. Um, so instead of having a weak sphincter, you replace the sphincter with this device and it fills it with water. And basically you can press the labia majora uh, where one, mm, one part of the device is there where you press it and then you can urinate. And then neurostimulation implants is basically a machine where you implant uh, into your vertebrae around the sacral area, basically to bo be more specific, S1, S2. Um, and this machine is then connected to a phone and where you can basically then control the impulses. Uh, we usually do that, for example, for MS patients or for patients that had uh, or have um, diabetes and then basically lost um, the sensation of the bladder. Uh, or they also have um, basically um, a bowel incontinence in that way. Okay. So if we're talking about medications, the conservative part, we have the anticholinergics, yeah, which are the M3 inhibitors. And as I said, anticholiner the parasympathetic system is the one that activates actually the mictation, uh, the urination. So if you have the inhibitors, then you can basically treat that part. Um, but as we know, anticholinergics have uh, side effects. So you always have to keep that in mind, especially for old people. Then we have the Mirabrego, which is uh, beta-3 adenoreceptor agonist. Yeah. So that one relaxes the detrusor muscles. Um, and it's basically really good for, for um, is, a, is, a, is a good one when you have uh, urge incontinence. Um, and of course, the contraindications you also have to have in mind, especially the glaucoma and the hypertension. Um, most of the cases, it's really a, an absolute contraindication when it comes to that, especially the glaucoma. Um, Duloxetine is basically um, one of the only medications when it comes to stress incontinence. So it increases the nervous pudentosin activity, yeah? and leads to increased sphincter toner. So I said I would um, show a picture of the type of the um, operative methods where you have the colpus suspension, for example. Um, do you guys see what I'm showing here? I don't know. Okay. So you have the corpus suspension nach de lancy, which is basically what we're doing. So this is the urinary bladder, right? And this is the urethra. Simple. The corpus suspension nach de lancy, you basically make a cut in the abdomen. Yeah. And then you go through the abdomen and then you find the bladder. And then you find, of course, where the urethra goes in, and then the lateral wall. And what you do is basically pull the lateral wall up. So you stabilize the urethra here. Then you have the suburethral injection, which is basically, um, I think the market name is Bulkamid. Um, I don't use that quite often um, because of the urethral neck necrosis, the risk for that, but it's actually a good option. And that basically, so you go uh, transurethral and, and 
put this type of injection in there, um, which basically bulks the, the urethra a bit together, st stabilizes it, the sphincter. Then, as I said, we have the tension-free vaginal tape, and you have different types, of course. Um, the tension-free uh, urethral tape is where you then, if you imagine the vagina like this, Okay, and then you have the urethra here. You make a cut exactly under the urethra, and then you make a tunnel on each side, okay? You basically put this band on each side of the tunnel and stabilize, it, stabilize the urethra, which is quite good for, for example, for stressing continence. And... TVTO is basically another option. It's a trans a trans operatoid. They have the same kind of um, the same kind of um, how do we say uh, role in that matter, but it it it's actually mostly um, a technical operational thing. TVTO and supra pubic TVT, and then a mini sling. We usually is also a TFLT, but it's basically don't go to any other structure. Uh, and that way, we usually uh, use that for obese people where we find a big risk to do something. So I hope you enjoyed this uh, presentation. Um, I know it was, um, I tried to summarize it um, a lot because I want to do a second part where I basically more talk about the anatomy and the prolapses and how these things go hand in hand. But I hope, still hope that you learned something from me. And if you have any questions, you are free to ask them. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much, Dr. Dilawa, for your nice presentation. I think uh, I uh, translate your seminar as a summary to Kormanji. After that, we can, if uh, friends have a question, we can ask our questions and maybe if necessary, we have uh, some discussion. As the Khazim Bakurtasi, Sheikh Ohad Kutin, Vagarinim Kormanji, Okshan, the Kutin, Persehoji, Perspikin. Spas. Spas. Seminar Sir Urinary Incontinence Bu Brasi and his bottom of Kurmanji Hagar Shash Nabumani Piechtiaria Tamakumize Chedebu control the Kimro Sir Onebe as warm Arabi Salasul Salasuboli Bagar Shash Nabum. A deductoraj good Brasti Vena Hoshi de Kare. Bandori ki perze de ser kefiete jian herkesik bika per de genda chedebe jeni jenanda zede tej zlamu bataiba tamas ku tamanda chejur shesa chelber seni zaruk anin u hata marhale menopaus de kare khateri ya riske zede tel bika jeber ku audu factor sedem de ben au adolat ya mazulkene pelvic floor levedeme لواز بن ضعیفتر بن دماغ او تایفون مازول مازوکیا عضلات پلویک چه بو ام و نخوشی یوریناری این کانتینز زیاده دبینین آنی زمان کو چند جوره گشتی او های یک جوره کو دبجن استرس استرس یوریناری این کانتینز کو زیاده تر دادما مثلاً تمارین داد دادما کو مرف دکنه یا دخته سرلاش مرف های چه دبی زیاد هرچی سدم او لوازبون مازل پلیک یا عضلات پلیکه جوره دن ارجن بو کو زیادتر دم آچه دبی کو بلایدر یا مسانه به بچین آور اکتیف دبی به تایبت دم کو یوتی آی های یعنی او التهاب کو تا یوتی آی دا چه دبی یوتی دا یورناری ترک دا چه دبی ام و جوره دبینین آور فلو های کود لبه دمیده بلید یا مسانه باش دماغو یورینیشن چه دوی باش پاکش نبه اوجی دکاره سدم او زیده تر عصبی ها به یان کو ده مجره یا بوریه نکو های پثوی یورین بلاکه چه به انصداد چه به 
او جي زيدا دي سا بدا غير سر اوكو احتمالك يفر زيدا جبركو عدلات بليد يا بليد يا مسانه لاواز بن بحث باثولوجي او كر كو ما قد زيدا احتمال هي بس سدم ويك بلفيك مازلس يعني عدلات بلفيك لاواز بن بحث جوهارتنين هرمونيه بتايبت مجار استروجين بو يوريناري تراكت انفكشن هاجر انفكشن اكد يوريناري تراكت هابي او هر وها هندك عمليات يا جراحي هي يا هندك درمان هي كو مرور بكارتيرا اونا دا كارن سادم باثولوجي كي في نخوشي بن جبو در دياغنوسيس شي تشخيص يا نزمان انامنسيس يعني پرسي كو مرور جنا خوشتكا فيزيكال اكزامينيشن وكو هندك رباز آني بزمان وكو هات تست آنکو مارشال بانی تست هست. آنکو ریاض دیاگنوسیس تست هست که دکاره سیتی ام بکار بین یا یوروفلاومتر آنکو ای ام بکار بین. هر وقت جبر کو ام پیشی بگرین یعنی پریفنشن جوی نخوشی هندی ریاض آنی زمان یک جوانا کیل اکسرسایز یعنی آو تمارین کو تایباز جبو پلیک مازل عضلات پلیک ام دکاریم بکار بینین. ویت ریداکشن نه یعنی چه قسم کاری بین گرانی وزن خود کم بکن یعنی نه هدیم پرقلابین نه اسموکینگ ذاتن چه قراره نیکشندن مجاری آزمای حیات کارین آزمای یا کوخین زیاده چه نبیش بر کود کاری دخته بده سر لیدر یا سر مسانه و هر وها مجاری کانتیپیشن از نزدیم کانتیپیشن یو بس هست چیکار نزدیم عربی و چیه کانتیپیشن یعنی Antipation? جی هیه بحث اینترвенشن یعنی مداخله نه تبیه هیه کود دگرچه حتی دکار عملیات چه بی آنکو بوتاس چه بی آنکه درمان این کو زیاده تیم دکار آنی و کو آنتی کولینرژی آنتی کولینرژیک هم سرتین به تایبت او اینهی بتر و کو تولترودین آنکو میرا بگرون هبو هر وها اگر شاش نبم دولوکسیتین او چند زمان گشتی ها بکو دکترا بکار یعنی سمینار خود آنی زمان من پر با کورتاسی تشینو که از گهشتم نویس بکم ورگران هگر پرس کسی که هبه نقاشی که هبه اون دکارنج دکتر دلاوه پرس خود بکم خیلی ممنون دکتر سیدا از Dr. Dilawad, Dr. Masuma has a question. The question yes. is, is there association between, uh, for example, hypothyroidism or hypothyroidism and uh, urinary incontination, uh, incontinence? یعنی وقت گردایی که دنابر تیروید نخوشین تیروید و یو ایدا؟ A very interesting question. Um, I have to actually think about that more. I have heard some of it um, that it could basically have a correlation with each other, but it's more uh, about the urge incontinence, I would say. Uh, than basically the stress incontinence. Um, but I, I can get back to you about it if you leave your email address and then I can send more information about it. Of course, if uh, you will uh, come back to us and have a clear question, it will, I, uh, we will appreciate you, Dr. Glover. Definitely, definitely. Okay.
Hanım Bey Hanım, acaba bir şekilde ne ya? Ee, Rebaza şiir, derman ya bu verzeş. Derman şiir. Az varım dermanı kalıp, az Uh, the next question is uh, for the weekend uh, blader muzzle. Uh, yes. What is the description? Uh, preserve, uh, pre preservative and interventional. If you have any. So it it depends on how weak the bladder muscles are. Um, basically, um, if you have a stress incontinence. Basically, which means the the weakening of the bladder muscles um, by uh, increased intra-abdominal pressure. The only so basically the conservative is basically to try to uh, make the bladder muscles um, stronger through physiotherapy and EMG. Usually, um, it doesn't work that well. I must say. Um, because once the muscles or the ligaments, that's the thing, you can't train ligaments. Um, if the ligaments are broken, you can't train them. You can just repair them. So it depends on, okay, so to basically, um, it depends on where the weakening is. If it is the urethra or if it is the detrusal muscle that has a problem if we say it in that way, or if they have a prolapse, depending on what their actual problem is in the stress incontinence, through that, I would choose the method of therapy, which basically means if they have a prolapse, let's say, which leads to a uh, stress incontinence, I would, I would use first the conservative therapy of a PESA, maybe in combination with duloxetine. Okay, which is basically one of the only medications for the stress incontinence, yeah? Because it increases the nervous pudendous activity. But usually for stress incontinence, if it's bigger than that, and I see that these things are not helping, I would go to more the interventional, which means the operations, basically TFLT, Kolposuspensihun, Bulkamid, as I said, depends on where the weakening is. Uh, okay, to the bit. The question is about uh, Kegel exercise. The doctor Abir has a question mm -hmm. at uh, age uh, we have to start this uh, exercise directly after childbirth. I would, uh, uh, yeah, I would, I would definitely. Basically, before um, getting pregnant too, I would also, um, how do we say, uh, recommend it. But eight weeks, approximately eight weeks after childbirth, I would recommend it. Yeah. Uh, is the association between diabetes and uh, UI? And yes, how of much course. positive association, how much? Uh, I don't understand the question. No, Is there any association between diabetes and uh, UI? UTIs, urinary tract infections? No, no, no. Uh, urinary urinary incontinence, yes, of course, a lot. First of all, during diabetes, you have to go, basically you drink a lot of water, or you have to avoid a lot. So basically that's also a part of the urinary incontinence that you can't hold. You have to go to the toilet quite often. Um, also, because you're, as we know, diabetes also irritates our muscles or weakens our muscles so and our nerves. So it leads also to nerve damages and muscle damages. So yes, there is a big correlation between diabetes and urinary incontinence. And also urinary tract infections. So it irritates the bladder. Uh, okay, let's, I have uh, 
maybe two or three question for you, Dr. Tlava. Kad azji yak do persam kam? Basha, karam kam. Uh, I think there is an association between uh, high dosage of uh, vitamin C and calcium, yes, with the uh, UI. Um, I have never heard about that. Wow. Uh, why, why would you think that? I don't know. I think maybe in some article uh, I read that there is a... Uh, positive association between high dosage of vitamin C and calcium. I just interesting. Uh, how is the mechanism? Um, I actually uh, I only think about vitamin C. Then I think about the immune system and the calcium, basically of the muscles. But I have not heard about this in a way like. Should it be positive or should it be negative association? I think it was a positive association. For example, yeah, high... if it's positive, then I would think about that basically. But um, other than that, I wouldn't think another association with directly vitamin C and calcium um, more than nerve stimulation or um, basically the muscle stimulation and the immune system. Is there a method uh, name as uh, the slings? Sling method? That's yes, that's the TFLT. That's the transvaginal tension free tape. That's the sling method. Mm. That's basically this. If if you can still see my presentation, that's what I was trying to describe here. That's the sling method. The sling mm -hmm. method is basically another word for TFLT, tension-free vaginal tape. Okay, Dr. Dilawa, uh, as far as the persimaji levitary pedavi buya, Nazanam Hagar, perseki wahabe, majariki monarch, judabe, discussion, a judahabe, one at the current. We have no question. If you have any points, any comments, and any discussion, you, uh, please you go on. Kalex Pastakam, who to stack a bougie email on the scholar with her own the binan, um, the canon had them the canon per se on a rabbitchinan. Um, Yane Cordiama Bosch, I'm a Cordiama Nish boy with presentation of Katsu Bosch, none of guys had to stack it or if to them. اما ان شاء الله پیش رو جز بکنم پریزنتاسیون کی بکردی جی بدم و گل اکس پاس تکم جبای وقتی و رو جای کی خوش پاس تکم جبای و جبای گروه تکو اون به هفرانه سپاسی و دکن ساعت و جی خوش کردی تو جی خوش بو سپاس سپاس